we're constantly, you know, using evidence in the classroom uh, and having students uh, get on Google Scholar and other databases to look up research. So, yeah, we're just it's like walking, talking library database all the time. It's just so that's so ingrained in our in our training. It's the thinking tools. So it's not just the knowledge. It is constantly changing. So what needs to be somewhat stable is kind of our process in which we're thinking about those things, you know, exploring the problem, understanding why it's a problem, you know, and, and bringing, you know, debunking some of that a little bit and then generating strategy on what to do about this, mobilizing it, collecting some data, seeing how this intervention or whatever we did to try to solve this problem worked or didn't work. And so if we're just adopting knowledge and applying it uh, haphazardly as these different ideas and topics ebb and flow, throughout our, you know, the, the sporting space. I, I don't know if we ever would get to the, the deeper level ethical dilemmas and the, the application of these things in positive ways that we might see, you know, on a regular basis. Again, that integrated biopsychosocial model uh, where, you know, uh, go back to supplementation, like supplements and drugs. There's ethics is ubiquitous in that. So the idea that you know, we would just do it or reduce it to a class or a key on a key topic. It's in everything that we do. I teach, just got done teaching a strength conditioning module talking about injury prevention because we don't have enough strength coaches and sport coaches that are really prepared to think about exercise outdoors in, in the heat, uh, sickle cell, sudden death, cardiac arrhythmia. All of those sorts of things are obvious ethical issues, not just biological, the ethic and standard of care that we provide. So sometimes we don't think enough about that ethical stance, but we put that out there and, and integrate it in everything.